It's Friday, May 3rd, 2024, when I'm recording this, and yesterday I woke up and saw in the news that there had been a recent fairly large solar flare. Now, we are currently in the active period of solar cycle 26, so we've already had an X-class flare in February. This flare is M9.5 on a logarithmic scale, so it's about 89% as bright as an X1 flare. I'll put the math in the description for how to figure that out. When I saw this image, I immediately started wondering what type of YouTube video I could make that would be different from the usual voiceovers of satellite footage, and thought of some neat geeky questions which turned into hours of Googling information that isn't very popular or easy to find. This video gets geekier and geekier the further on you watch, so feel free to skip ahead if you already know the first parts that I'm talking about. So the original idea was to answer one of the questions I already knew the answer to, which is why is the sun, why is the sun blue in this image? And a second that I was curious about, what does a solar flare really look like in real time, i.e. not time lapse? And then I noticed a really interesting little detail. What does AIA-131, that's highlighted in the lower left corner of the video, mean? So the answer to the first question is that astronomers color code images based on the wavelength of light. The sun, like a lot of very hot objects, glows white in the visual range. Exactly how hot something needs to get in order to be white depends on the material it's made of. That's why there's normal black iron, and then there's red hot iron, and then there's white hot iron. Same principle. So visible light pictures of the sun are really good for finding sunspots, but the flares and prominences are difficult to spot unless they happen to be on the edge of the disk. We humans also see only a really narrow band of wavelengths, so the most interesting light is invisible to us. The image we are now looking at is short wavelength UV light. So it's blue because blue has a shorter wavelength, and on the other hand, most of the JWST images you see are red because they're infrared images that have a longer wavelength like red. There's also some other standards about when to use green light in pictures of nebula for certain elements, etc., etc. So what does that AIA-131 in the lower left mean? If you go to the website that's on the image, helioviewer.org, you can get all sorts of images of the sun, and I had a hunch that 131 was the wavelength. But I don't do a lot of solar science, so I wasn't sure whether that 131 was in nanometers or angstroms. 131 nanometers and 131 angstroms are both UV light, and apparently solar scientists always use one, but I didn't know which. Doing a lot of fishing around on that site and googling satellites and instruments, I ended up matching the image to the SDO AIA instrument. So that's where AIA comes from. Figuring out the 131 part was a lot harder. The very specific wavelength of light was obviously chosen for a reason, but what's the cause of the light we're actually looking at? To keep this video from being an hour-long lecture, the answer is there's two iron atoms, both of which are missing more than half of their electrons, which emit light at 131 angstroms and are around 10,000 degrees Kelvin. So those ions are a convenient choice because that's about how hot the filaments of the solar prominences are. The iron ions that we're looking at here aren't produced in the sun because the sun isn't hot enough to create iron. But the ions were created by previous supernovae and ended up in the gas that formed the sun. So the last question was, what does a solar flare look like if you're actually watching it at normal speed? I'll leave the movie playing at real time while I talk about it. The SDO AIA takes one image every 60 seconds, and if you look at the timestamps on the movie, you can figure out that an hour takes about two seconds to go by. Looking up how the movies from that site are rendered before they're uploaded to YouTube, it's actually 30 spacecraft images per second, which comes out to one second equals 30 minutes, so it's exactly two seconds per hour. It turns out that even though we are all used to watching these loops of plasma erupt and then splash down, the actual process is much, much, much slower. Now, heliovira.com has a lot of pictures, but only movies for really interesting events and only at certain wavelengths. I wanted to get an even more realistic image, so I looked for filters in the visible range. It turns out there isn't any satellite that observes the narrow range that we see, so I faithfully downloaded 10 frames at 304 angstroms. We humans can see down to about 380 angstroms, which is where ultraviolet light starts, so 304 angstroms is in the UVB range. I settled on showing that light because it's the primary source of sunburn. 
By the way, the image is red because it's a fairly long wavelength of UV light, even though the wavelength is shorter than violet light. So what you're seeing here is a loop at real speed of the light that we commonly mean when we talk about UV light. I really do recommend that you go off and play with helioviewer.org. It's quite interesting and entertaining. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And also, any further info or things that I got wrong, please feel free to put them in the comments below.